Good afternoon. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers Politics in Hawaii series. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. Today we're going to talk and learn a little, a little bit about uh, Aloha Stadium. Uh, it's been around since the mid-70s. I believe it was originally built in 1975. Uh, very first game played in 1975 as well and has just proceeded from there to be a site of many, many events and activities, including the Pro Bowl. Uh, recently, uh, well, we, we missed it last year, hoping to get it back again. I would love that, but there's a lot of developments happening, and there's a lot of issues and concerns over the past several years uh, on what to do with this now aging facility. So to help me with this conversation, uh, I am thrilled and excited uh, to introduce Senator Glenn Wakai to the show. Thank you for joining me today. A pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. And you're talking about thrills. I mean, Aloha Stadium is something that people can get excited about. Prisons, not so exciting. Bridges, not so exciting. But a stadium, that is exciting. It really is because it, it brings about entertainment. Mm -hmm. It brings about community uh, coming together, whether it's a cultural purpose or, you know, well, s sports can be a cultural purpose, but uh -huh. there are other means and other, other reasons and other variables. So, um, okay, before we jump into Aloha Stadium, because uh, we're going to talk the rest of the show about that. What I would like to do is um, let our listening and viewing audience learn a little bit about you. You are state senator, Senate yes. District 15. Correct. Uh, tell us a bit about, because you have, you have a history before that, so tell us a bit about yourself and how you got to where you are and what your focus on Aloha Stadium is. So just give us a brief history, bringing us up to Aloha Stadium. Well, I was bored. No, I'm just <laughs> I'll bring you up to uh, professional history. So yes. I started out in the news business. I did television news for 11 mm -hmm. years at KHON as well as what's now Hawaii News Now. Back then it was KHNL. Uh, but after 11 years in news, I kind of got tired of it. Uh, and, you know, as a reporter, you're just a spectator telling people what others are doing. And I want to be those others and start doing something that was positive for the community. So in 2002, jumped into the shark tank and swam with the sharks and have been swimming there 15 years. So eight years in the House and seven years now in the Senate. And my district uh, goes from Kalihi all the way to Aloha Stadium. So the stadium and its future is of utmost interest to the constituents uh, that I serve. But I'm also the chair of the Economic Development, Technology, and Tourism Committee. And on the side, I'm a big sports fan. So for me, looking at Aloha Stadium, it's in my district. It has economic opportunities. And really, Aloha Stadium gives people something to cheer about. And I'm all about uh, giving some energy to our community. So it's, for me, it's, it's a real passion to try to see what we can do better with that 100 acres of land there. Yes, exactly. One, it's a, a, approximately 100 acres. My notes say 104 acres. That is correct. I'm not going to argue over four acres, but I think, it's, I, I think it's great. So first of all, thank you for jumping into the Shark Tank. Uh, thank you for deciding that, you know what, you can't, it's not just about reporting it, it's about being involved. Uh, I'm an advocate of more people being involved in the mm -hmm. conversation and have always been. So I always appreciate it when someone says, you know what, I want to go help. And I want to go help in a different way. So I thank you for doing that and for the years of your service. So what, what house district were you in? I was in, a, I can't remember the number because it's all changed. Oh, it changes changed district, too. That's right. But it was uh, right. Mauna Loa and Salt Lake. So okay. It was, I think uh, that's 31 right now. Uh, could be. Yeah, either way. It's all good. Okay. So that area. And then now it's uh, Senate 15, which includes that whole area, which is. Plus Kalihi. Huge area because that also includes OCCC, which has got some things going on there. Uh, so I know it touches on that, mm -hmm. and then the rail line coming through. So yep. there's there's a big piece of. So you're like right in the middle with, with that economic development and tourism area. That fun Woo! problem that rail brings is going to be on my front doorstep very soon. Very soon. Well, I would love to have you back to talk about that at a future show. I'm not going to have that be about today. That's going to be the two-hour documentary. That well, we can do that. I'm gonna, I'd be thrilled to do that. So okay. Um, so thank you for that, and thank you for your for your service and your time um, with that. So. Um, actually, I want to ask more, one more question about your committee, Economic Development, Tourism and Technology. And technology. Tell us a bit more about that committee, what sorts of things you work on, what sorts of things that the committee tries to accomplish. Well, obviously we're about creating more jobs and a stronger economy, but I'm not of the mindset that we're going to just create jobs for jobs' sake. I mean, we have the lowest unemployment in the nation. But we know that our neighbors have two jobs that are cobbling together some low-wage jobs. Yeah. I'd rather us have a position in Hawaii where people have one quality job. So my, my kind of uh, 
path forward is going to be using, uh, instead of using this muscle, which built Hawaii, agriculture and tourism, we're going to start using this muscle. We're going to use innovation, creativity to be the model for our economic engine of the future because we know that those jobs pay a living wage. Those are jobs that are going to be north of $80,000 a year, right. not more bed changers, and, not bed, changers, bed sheet changers right. and front desk clerks. Not to say that those are bad jobs, but those are kind of uh, service-oriented, low-wage jobs. We really need to pivot towards getting our young people involved in meaningful jobs. Exactly, which addresses the, the, the idea that has been talked about by many about brain drain, and that's the number of our kids that leave. Mm -hmm. and never come back. We got to get the brain gain. We need exactly. We need to start gaining more and by providing those. So I, I appreciate that direction. Um, I will also invite you back to another show to talk about that specifically uh, because I would like to dig more into what that means because I agree wholeheartedly. It cannot be just about a job because mm -hmm. then yes, you end up having two or three jobs just to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. Some of the statistics you may or may not have um, uh, uh, exacts on, but some of the statistics I've heard is the poverty line in Hawaii is about $83,000 a year for a family. And in order to just get by you, as a family of four, you need $120,000 a year in income. That's hard to come by. And, in, and with minimum wage even increasing as it is, uh -huh. it doesn't match. So it's really hard. So that's an area that needs some focus. So I'd love to talk about that in the future. So today we're going to oh, go back to a lot of I'm going to be on here every month with you. <laughs> that would be great. I would welcome that. I would welcome that. Exactly. So, okay, let's go back to Aloha Stadium then. Um, so with that, a lot of things have come up. Now, uh, before the show we were talking, there was a change recently. So uh, that change is an important change. But um, as far as Aloha Stadium, from its economic value for your district and for the state of Hawaii, um, what can you tell us about its importance th that it, you know, historically and, and how it's being looked at from today and going forward? We're at the most exciting time in the stadium's history. This is the most exciting time in 42 years since we built the, the stadium. Um, and the backstory is that it was actually Navy land. The Navy handed it over to Fish and Wildlife, so it was still under federal control which then uh, deeded the land over to the city. The city deeded it over to the state. So it's so many different hands that were uh, involved. But up until March of this year, the federal deed restriction said it was only for public recreation, which hampered our ability to do economic developments there. Okay. I mean, we could have turned it into a big park, but I think a lot of us lawmakers saw that you have 108 acres of prime, prime real estate, yeah. and we should be utilizing that. Uh, land for opportunities for economic development, not just have a nice, beautiful park. So it was with that mindset. Parks are great, and they're absolutely needed as well, but I think y y you need to balance it, right? No, e exactly. So it, it's been a five-year effort. People have been asking us, well, why didn't you do this before? State your soul cumbersome and, and so like, you're moving like at, at a sloth space right. pace and we said well we really would like to reinvent the area but with this deed restriction we couldn't do very much so we finally back and forth we did a land swap the federal government the department of interior got uh, a park on maui in exchange for the 100 acres that we now have full title for and, and a clean slate and so what's exciting, and that happened this year that happened in march of this year excellent and uh, a few months ago the state appropriated $10 million for Aloha Stadium to do two things. One, get an environmental impact statement done, make sure that we have a good uh, land there, and if there's any trouble spots, we would know about those trouble spots. And also, that $10 million is going to pay for a master plan. What is this area going to look like? It cannot be a 100-acre asphalt with a 50,000-seat um, stadium right. on it. It's right. got to be much more. There's so, much more opportunity available for that, especially with the rail coming through. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good point, too. Yeah. I mean, the city had the mindset that the rail stop at Aloha Stadium was going to be a park and ride. Yeah. To me, what a ridiculous underutilization of that land. Let's create a destination yes. so that people get off more than six times a year for a UH football game, but there's reasons to get off multiple times right. uh, throughout, the, throughout the year. So are, is this being looked at from the uh, transit-oriented development perspective? Let's get some businesses there. Let's get some residences there. Let's build up the area. It's, it's sort of a multi-use. Mm -hmm. that, that's sort of the, I mean, that's, that's the hope. Obviously, the planning hasn't happened yet. No, the planning isn't. Yes, correct. It's, it's, yeah. But it's in the works. And yeah. we, have, we have just all of what you just mentioned all lined up. So the stars have lined up perfectly for us to reinvent that area. Okay. And of all of the rail stops that we have, 
This is the largest swath of public land that surrounds a rail station. You know, some other stations we have a, two blocks away, we have this land, but this is a huge opportunity yeah. for the state to help reinvent that entire area. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Well, what sorts of revenues have, like on an annual basis, uh, has the stadium produced over the years? The stadium has an annual operating budget of $7 million. Its largest lessee is the swap meet. Swap meet accounts for $4 million out of that $7 million. Okay. Um, and swap meet has been there for, for decades, but I really think the state can do better than have it as a home for a swap meet. Yeah, so, and it's great. A lot of people use it. I've been there myself. And some of it is interesting and some of it is repetitive. So I think that, you know, yeah, I think it could use some revitalization there. Mm -hmm. So in general, now the fact that it's 42 years old leads to the questions of, okay, is it in, what state of repair or disrepair is it in? First of all, what can you tell us about that? It costs us about $20 million a year just to keep, keep that facility structurally sound to make sure that the yellow and, and uh, upper sections don't fall onto the blue and wow. orange people below. So it, if it costs us $20 million a year, and if we know that a 35,000 seat stadium that's multi-purpose would be $350 million, um, it doesn't take a genius to say that like, this it really doesn't make any sense in putting more money into right. into the current stadiums like having a 42 year old car how many times are you going to change the engine it's time to get rid of that car. <laughs> time to get a new and and also develop it for you know, have it be part of a developmental plan so that it n generates more revenues for the state but also more opportunities and more jobs for people more residences because that's a big concern we have um, mm -hmm. as well so i think it, looking at it from that perspective it makes sense we should be addressing it in some way thinking about the future with that correct and we're not talking yeah. about just the stadium facility itself but everything that's going to go around, around it. it so people have to kind of understand that the stadium is going to be the marquee uh, center of this area but we hope to provide just a lot of opportunities whether it's retail whether it's museums whether it's businesses housing I mean that place is going to be dynamic not just a parking lot it really can now what sort of a time frame are we looking at for that because obviously we have to get into the planning phase but then planning and then building so we've got years to go right right in my most optimistic everything is a green light projection uh, the EIS and that master plan I just spoke of would probably take about two years. Uh, it's going to probably take another year for us to get the money. $350 million is no easy lift. Nope. Um, and then I would say maybe if we're super lucky, in five years you'll see dirt moving and a new stadium erected. And keep in mind, we're going to build the stadium, as if it's planned this way, uh, where the 50 state fair is. Mm. So that lower parking lot is yeah. where the new stadium will be built. We're not tearing down Aloha Stadium until the new stadium is built because a lot of fans are wondering, like, well, wondering, are you going yeah, to re just replace the old stadium and is UH going to be playing at Monolo High School? No, no, that's not going to happen. Right, so they'll right. be playing uh, while the other stadium is going to be built. It's going to provide us challenges for parking, but uh, that's kind of how we're envisioning the build out. There are actually, frankly, there are challenges for parking already uh, in, in other areas. I, I know that I, when I went to the Pro Bowl a few years ago, I had to park in Fort Island. Uh, and get bussed over. Mm -hmm. um, so there's still, parking was always going to be an issue and that actually gives us an opportunity to address it in different ways with parking structures. Uh, and, and if you're looking at it from a larger perspective as well. But yeah. Well, if parking is going to be an issue, that's a good problem to have. Yeah. That means the UH football team is doing well. Exactly. If parking is not an issue, <laughs> uh, we're all watching something else. Exactly, and we want to be watching UH we play. Certainly Absolutely, do. we Go do. No, I love it. That And so um, we have a, about another minute before we have to take a break, but, um, but then I want to get into how do we get the Pro Bowl back? We had the Pro Bowl for what, 34 years? Uh, 34, it's something like that, a long, long time. And last year, they were not here. And there's an ep economic impact to that. And I think that that's something that needs to be understood. And it's maybe one of the reasons we need to think about what we're doing with UH in the years to come, or not, I'm sorry, with uh, the Aloha Stadium in the years to come is how we get something like that back. Uh, because I think that that's been a big piece. Carl, I agree with you on 99% of the things we talk about. This one, I don't agree okay, with you on. Okay. I, I just don't think the Pro Bowl is worth us dropping $5 million on. Okay. And it's really become a joke, right? It's become touch football with guys in pads. Yeah, it, they're, they're it's not, true. They're not whacking each other. They're worried about affecting their million-dollar contract. So that's I'm true. really not envisioning the Pro Bowl ever coming back, and, and therefore we don't need a 50,000-seat 
stated because that's what some people say. Yeah. Like, why are you going 35,000? How could, what if the Pro Bowl wants to come back? Well, I'm not basing it on the Pro Bowl coming back. I'm basing it upon what Hawaii needs. Yeah. Does it fit uh, our needs? I mean, the Pro Bowl, the, the foot, it's in football configuration. We need that stadium to be able to bring in concerts, yeah. UFC fighting, drone racing, whatever the future. Drone educate, racing. Or whatever. Wow. Uh, whatever. I want to hear more about that. <laughs> I'm just pulling that out of there. But sure. <laughs> it has to be more than just. Unmanned vehicle racing, drone or otherwise. Interesting. You'll, you'll be at the controls, Carl. That's, that's, that's fascinating. Okay. Now, that, by the way, I, don't, I, I have no problem when we disagree. We don't disagree a lot, as you say, but I have no problem that we disagree. In fact, it's important that, that sometimes we disagree on things. So um, we can talk more about that. And okay. I'm, not, I, I'm willing to hear, and, I, and I'm never close-minded. So if you, can, if you can convince me, that, that would be great. Okay. So thank you so much. We, uh, we do have to take a quick break. So thank you for joining us again, and thank you for joining us. This is Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers Politics in Hawaii series. I'm your host, Carl Campagna, with today's guest, Senator Glenn Wakai. Thank you. See you in a minute. watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search diveheart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others, and in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers Politics in Hawaii series. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. Once again, our guest today is Senator Glenn Wakai, uh, District 15. Specifically today, we're talking about Aloha Stadium, where it is now, where it's going, and what opportunities we have. So let's jump back into that and say, okay, um, real briefly, um, as far as my, my thought on the Pro Bowl is there's a sense of pride that we have had. Uh, here in Hawaii with regards to the Pro Bowl. The sense of pride doesn't necessarily mean a dollar amount. It doesn't mean it's economically viable. So again, I'm open to it being not something that continues, but I know that it's a big thing that a lot of people like to claim. Um, is, is that more of an accurate statement right, than, than it being economically viable? So is that, is that where you're sort of coming from with that? Oh, I think Hawaii is a football crazy town. You yes. look at what Mar Marcus Mariota has done, it just really, yeah. I never thought of cheering for anything in Tennessee, but all of a sudden, I'm a Titans fan. <laughs> so you can see how, I mean, the Hawaii love for football, and when we have a local boy does good, yeah. I mean, we're all, we're all, all on board the Marcus yeah, yeah. Mariota train. But in terms of football stars coming here and really mm, playing kind of a, uh, an all-star game that really they're not, they're not pounding each other like they would in a, in a real right, game. Right. So I think it, it, we're, we're kind of fake fooling and faking out not just our fans, but just the NFL in general. I mean, they've had many discussions on should they even continue that game because no one really takes it seriously. No one takes it seriously. It doesn't have any actual value. It doesn't mean anything towards anything. People can get hurt. Players can get hurt with it. Um, so those things. And recently, you know, I'm, I'm sure you read about 99% of the uh, professional football athletes, uh, former professional football athletes that have been tested have some form of brain uh, um, contusion or injury or, or some issue as a result of the game itself. That's a whole other concern to be to really be dealt with, especially when we think about our kids, young kids, mm -hmm. Marcus Mariota or not, um, our young kids in, in, involved in that game. So now I, I think it's a good topic and it's, and it's important to understand the dynamics of it all. So, so thank you for that. Um, so okay, as far as the stadium is concerned, thinking about what it is used for and what it can be used for with the planning that you're talking about. And we don't know what the plan is going to come up with. We know that. But what sorts of things? You mentioned uh, drone races. Okay, great. Lots of possibilities. But uh, what are some of the ideas and what are some of the thoughts that, that you would like to talk about with regards to the usage of this area, this 100 acres and this facility? Uh, tell us more about that. Well, it's not useful for soccer. 
Uh, it's too small for a full-on rugby match. Uh, here we are in the center of the Pacific, and rugby is popular around us. Soccer is popular around us. We should be the north meets, I mean, not, the east meets west locale for rugby, soccer, um, and, and a lot of multitude of other events, but we're locked down into football configuration. Because we the facility to, itself it doesn't lend itself for uses other than football. Right. And even non-sports activities. I'm trying to work with UFC to bring the U a UFC fight here and, yeah. and, and really capitalize on Max Holloway's. And we really can, award. if you think about it, because we've got, um, we, we now have uh, uh, training facilities, UFC-oriented training facilities that exist in multiple locations across Oahu, and I think mm -hmm. we're looking at the neighbor islands as well. Um, so, you know, B BJ, um, Pen. Pen, thank you. Uh, BJ Penn, I, we were a member of it. Uh, we, we, we let it lax, unfortunately, but we were a member of it. And it, it was an extraordinary facility that leads people into a different type of training as well, which is spectacular. So you're so by capitalizing on that, by realizing that there is an interest level in that. So that's what you're saying, bringing events like that, having this be a destination for, for events like that. Right, which are too big for Stan Sheriff or Blaisdell, right. but perfect for a stadium, but our configuration there is not to UFC's liking. So we need to have a, a, a stadium or a facility there that can handle UFC. Multi, multi purpose. Concerts, other, other non Concerts other than in Blaisdell. Yes. Yeah. Right. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. wouldn't it be have great if Bruno Mars did one big show instead of five smaller shows yeah. at the Blaisdell? I think it would but be we just don't have the capacity. All of the above. All of the above. Uh, I think doing the smaller shows are great because it's got its different appeal, but I agree. Being able to do a large and, and have that, because it does make it a destination, especially if you've developed the area around a little bit. Now, can I bring up one more thing please, about please. utilization of the stadium that please, is please, super please. different and super exciting? Is we're in discussions with Top Golf, and if you're familiar with Top Golf, they're I kind am. of a celebrity, not celebrity, but a high end golf thing. It's more yes. than just hitting balls 300 yards. It's, yes. it's there's entertainment, there's booze, there's food, yeah. there's and so we want to have Top Golf be a part of the stadium. So yeah. wouldn't it be neat if when the stadium is dark, we just start launching balls and we turn that thing into a golf range. Yeah. And then when the stadium is active, they turn into luxury boxes. Yeah, so yeah. those are the, and, and Top Golf is willing to help pay for a build out of the stadium that. so that $350 million price tag won't be 100% paid for by taxpayers. I, I think that's great. I think that's great. Now, I have, I visited a Top Golf. Um, last year, uh, I had the ability to visit a friend of mine in, uh, right outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And they have a Top Golf there. And while I was there, he brought me over and said, hey, let's go, let's, let's go hang out here. Let's, let's spend some time there. And I was like, great. And it's extraordinary. It's, as you mentioned, it's multiple levels mm -hmm. where you just sit there and you can order some drinks, order some food have a great discussion with your friends and drive the ball and there are various targets and various ways to play in that s facility in that type of structure and it was a lot of fun yeah you could so be terrible at golf but it's still a fun experience. and i'm not great at golf and i agree <laughs> yeah i'm terrible at golf i'm not going to go to golf range and show everybody else how terrible i am no. but i will go and then chip and putt and act like a fool in the fun confines That's of a right. top golf facility, which can be utilized in a luxury box when it's not utilized as a That's driving range. What I like is that type of thinking. That type of thinking, I think, is important because it's really looking at it from not just one perspective. It's how can we be creative in multiple type uses in multiple ways. So it's not just we're going to build this thing so that top golf can do its thing. No, it's going to have multiple uses unto itself. Mm -hmm. I think I, I like that type of thinking. It's much more creative out of the box uh, thinking. So I, I appreciate that. Um, out of the stadium. Uh, out of the stadium thinking. There you go. Oh, you're out of yeah, the yeah. park. <laughs> out of the park. Oh my God, we can go on with puns forever. On and on forever. So okay, um, okay. Well, let me let me ask this question. Uh, we I think we have a few more minutes left. Anyway, what does the what does your district and what does the community and the neighbors around the stadium think? What are what are they asking for? They're super excited about the possibilities. Although they want to be part of the of the discussion as to how this evolves. So I have been like prepping them for the past five years. Because I know in Hawaii that we don't like change that comes quick. We're receptive to change, but you gotta do it in a methodical, ho mali mali, bring everyone to the table and discuss yeah. it, and then you win over the fans. I mean, we've seen some uh, others who come in here say like, I'm the smartest, best thing that ever happened to Hawaii. You will buy me, ride me, whatever me, and then they're gone. So uh, I, for, for I, a variety of reasons, but I've, yes. I've massaged yeah. the community, <laughs> and they are fully on board and receptive to 
of having an okay. entire redevelopment of that area. So, okay, so then, so what you have is the, the local foresight of knowing that, okay, something's going to have to happen. Let's engage the community. Let's include them in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Let's get their buy-in, basically. Yep. If, if we can create this into something that makes their lives better, hopefully, as well as bring some community pride as well along the line, uh, all aspects of that. So, so you spent all of that, all of this time talking about, and for uh, to, to <laughs> teeing up basically the opportunity mm -hmm. for what is to come, and and there's been positive feedback largely. Oh, very positive. Okay. I mean, they're concerned about noise and yeah. some level of traffic, but you Especially look at with the concerts with Bruno Mars coming in, everybody's going to hear you. Right, right. <laughs> if I lived at Crosspoint, I'd be happy. <laughs> I don't have to pay 400 bucks for his ticket. Like, it's like, just hey, listen, open the window. Hey, 24 karat gold is paid. <laughs> yes. He was a little pitchy on that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, okay, well, well, good. I think that's also um, from a politics perspective from a policy perspective, I think that's also one of the keys as well that we don't often hear about. And I think that that's important. And, and that is that community engagement on an issue. Um, holding talk stories, holding town halls, uh, coming up with ways of you know bringing people to Aloha Stadium and saying, hey, let's talk. So once we get into the planning phase, hopefully what goes on, and I would love to just come and, and witness, and you know, mm -hmm. it's not, I don't live in that district, but I'd love to come witness those types of conversations, the community engagement conversations, uh, to really learn you know, what the community thinks and how it can all be shaped together to create something like that. So do you foresee those things happening? Uh, yep, so I'm prepping them, massaging them, kneading them. <laughs> we are <laughs> ready possible. in that community to uh, be partners. I, I don't think we're gonna be obstructionists. We're not, there's not gonna be protests out there, uh, but they will want to be part of the conversation. Yeah, okay, excellent, excellent. Now, looking forward to all of that. Um, there, there are obviously pitfalls that need to be considered. There's the whole range of possibilities. Not everything is always positive. It's, it's how it gets done. Mm -hmm. um, everyone, because of rail and the costs of rail and how that has overrun in some ways, everyone's going to be very concerned about what this means. So how is it being paid for, trying to bring other money in? That's all very important. So do you foresee it being, uh, that, what you're obviously talking about there is a public-private partnership. Do you see more of that as yes. a possibility? Yes. Yeah. What I'm good at is learning from other people's mistakes. And I've seen how the city and the rail has gone sideways because yeah. why? Because it's a 100% government funded project. Yeah. When you have things of that size, you need private sector involvement for their money and for their expertise. And so we've mm -hmm. learned from rail and we're not gonna do rail 2.0 at a law stadium. This is gonna be rail done in a PPP format, which is right. public private partnership, right. bringing them into the table uh, and having them lead us and guide us uh, to where it becomes a place where we all want to, to gather and spend our money. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate oh, you coming on the show. My pleasure. Show's over already. It goes so quickly. I'll so thank you for joining month, us. A month we'll after that. And I'm, I, you're, on, I'm, you're on. I'll book okay. you. I will book you. I would love to have these conversations. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. This is Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers Politics in Hawaii series. Thank you again to my guest today, uh, Mr. Senator Glenn, Mr. Senator. Thank you. Uh, Glenn Wilkai, <laughs> uh, very much appreciate the conversation and what we learned today and uh, looking forward to next week and next month and we will see you then. Take care. Aloha.